Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, I want to get your take on the fallout from yesterday, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, George Papadopoulos, and Tony Podesta resigning. What do you make of all this? Well, I think there's a special counsel process, and it's working its way, and that's the way the law intended, and we need to let that work its way out. I was very happy, though, that they brought up one of the charges, and, of course, I think that this law is being ignored for a long period of time, the Foreign Agents Registration Act. We call that FARA for short. Uh, some of these people are charged because they were working for a foreign government in a, uh, uh, lobbying in our country, and they didn't register. So so that's been uh, something that you've been aggressively pursuing for years. In fact, one of the first stories I wrote about when I came to D.C. was about that in particular. On the left and on the right, do you think that the Justice Department is, is enforcing these disclosure laws adequately? No, I think they're going to now. In fact, that came out in our hearing that they weren't being enforced, and that's why we knew that. So that's why we had our hearing to bring attention to it. Now, this uh, investigation by the special counsel and these folks working for Ukraine and I don't know how many other countries lobbying our uh, our government. Here uh, in the United yeah, States, is, but, yeah. but everyone has known this. Is this like a dirty secret in Washington, D.C.? Uh, well, it isn't a secret anymore, but uh, uh, it, it, the law needs to be enforced, and these people are, are going to have to register now. And more importantly, the Justice Department, I'm sure, is going to see that they're registered. If there isn't, there's going to be uh, hell to be paid from the standpoint of our oversight, bringing attention to the Justice Department not doing its job. John, and this is over uh, Republican and Democrat administrations. Mm -hmm. John Podesta, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, are they going to be called before the Judiciary Committee? Do you think they have to be to retestify or to come back? I don't have plans to, to do that uh, now. We'll just let this thing evolve. Uh, but I would imagine that, uh, that there's a lot of unanswered questions there yet. A lot of unanswered questions that's going to continue. But meanwhile, Congress has other things on their plate, such as tax reform. Yeah. Is this going to hinder Congress's ability to get tax reform done by the end of the year? No because we got the Finance Committee and the Ways and Means Committee. Neither one of them are interested or involved uh, under our rules in this Russian investigation. You might have some overlap of members, like I'm a member of the Finance Committee, a member of the Ju Judiciary Committee and chairman there. Uh, it's going to uh, take some more uh, hard work on my part, but for most of the members, there isn't that overlap. And so you can, in a sense, Congress can walk and chew gum at the same time. You've got two different and committees working on it. We're going to get tax reform done, a middle income tax cuts done uh, by Christmas, I'm sure. How are you going to pay for tax reform or tax, a tax package? Yeah. We're going into this with an understanding that as far as dynamic scoring is concerned, the old fashioned way that CBO does it, we're going to account for one and a half trillion dollars less coming in because of reducing rates, but CBO doesn't take into consideration uh, economic growth. And so we, if, if the economy can just grow four-tenths of one percent, we will make that up. Well, what about on the issue of something like 401ks or rothification? A lot of asset managers, such as Fidelity, such as BlackRock, they're concerned a bit that taxing yeah. uh, deposits into 401ks on the upfront could yeah. have a negative impact. Let me give you my view, and then let me tell you what the alternatives are. My view is just leave it alone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I take this view. If everybody in the Congress took the view that if, uh, if I don't get my favorite thing in the tax reform bill, we'll never have tax reform. So I'm going to argue for what I just told you, uh, but if, it, uh, if I got a compromise on that, uh, we've screwed up this tax code so bad in the last 30 years, we can't let our own selfish interests interfere with shortening the tax code, tax reform, economic growth, creating jobs, middle income tax cuts. That's what we got to do. So then the alternative is, if we don't keep it like it is, we're going to let people save more, but part of it, under present law, will be uh, tax exempt when you put it in, but you can put more in. 
and pay tax on it before you put it in, but when you take it out a few years down the road, you won't have to pay tax on it. So it's got the same tax benefit. It's just the cases that happen now or have later on. We're still going to have the same incentives for saving. State and local deduction and the elimination of it also creating a lot of division, some division within the Republican yeah. caucus. What do you make of that? Well, for Republicans that are worrying about our tax system being very progressive, uh, this should be a no-brainer for them. If you want middle-income tax cuts, this should be a no-brainer because not having that exemption gives us a more opportunity to have middle-income tax cuts, and the top 1% get 40% of the benefit from the deduction of state and local taxes. Another issue, of course, uh, here on Capitol Hill today is the issue of Silicon Valley. There's a subcommittee hearing on the Judiciary Committee. We were talking off camera. You're going to be present for some of that. What does Facebook, Google, and Twitter, what is the message that you need to hear from them about whether or not they're adequately protecting U.S. interests? Okay. End result I want is that they're going to take every precaution they can to make sure that uh, foreign governments can't use our platforms like Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc., to influence our elections because we have to maintain confidence in the election. The extent to which they can show us that through self-regulation, the, the extent to which they know that that's a problem they have to deal with, then I'd say that's what we want. If they can't show us that, it could lead to possible regulation. And there are some proposals being put forth, bipartisan proposals, including by members of your committee, Senators Graham, as well as Senator Klobuchar and McCain. Do you agree with that, or do you have a position on that piece of legislation? Right now, not to go in that direction. This hearing will maybe shove me one way or the other. It's up to Facebook and these other platforms to show us that they can control this and make sure foreign governments don't try to influence our election. That's very basic. This wouldn't even be an issue if Russia hadn't been trying to influence elections in the United States and France and Netherlands and Germany and who knows where else. Now, everybody thinks they want to elect Hillary Clinton or Trump or uh, uh, Merkel or somebody else in Germany. Uh, they aren't interested in who runs these countries. They're interested in discouraging confidence in the d democratic process because they're autocratic and they don't like democracy because democracy might sneak into Russia and challenge uh, Putin. That's what they're up against. That's what they're fighting.